Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. Oh, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here again. We have quite a show. We are back with Elizabeth Wood, who is, oh my gosh, she is an advanced seer and she's an anthropologist who knows so much. We're going to be talking about being a bridge between heaven and earth. We know that this is why many of us incarnated and we are in the shift. We are deeply in the shift. And we hope everyone is moving through that well and navigating well. Again, uh, Elizabeth Wood is a beautiful facilitator to help you navigate that process. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you. Welcome back. Hi, thank you. I'm excited to talk to you now, especially to kind of compare where we were in our last interview to what's that? I mean, it's like a whole world worth of change already. So very cool to be with you. Thank you. Okay. That's a great place to start. What about the change? How has it been for you? I mean, here we are, we're already in a new year that always brings new energy. It feels like new energy. Um, what is it like for you in this newness? That <laughs> it's been really rough (laughs) I think it's it's definitely been rough you know it doesn't matter if you can see as well as say somebody like I do um these things you can't ever know exactly how it's going to pan out so I was prepared (laughs) in that I knew what was coming but you don't really necessarily know what lessons are going to show up. So I have to be really honest and say that I was nervous and, and fairly so. Because what's happened is the end of the black wave of consciousness occurred. 2022 was a very special and powerful year where we got really all of our deepest stuff handed to us. And it was so profound and it went very systematically through everything we experienced through our bodies. But, you know, it would come and it hit the throat chakra and then we'd all have to address, you know, all the little white lies we've told and all the different structures around our communications and, um, and all everything from past life stuff to you name it. So this past year was really hard. And then it came in through, the winter solstice, a lot of stuff ramped up right, of course, right beforehand, um, because finally the root, the root of our power, especially in the feminine body, got really laid out for us. Like, where do you give all your power? Was that big question. And then we got the solstice shift, which which was very cool. So when I was here experiencing it on this mountain in Ecuador, I it was everything stopped it was very strange it's unlike any solstice i've experienced and they're all different but this was really intense i was meditating and the whole entire world everything around me which is very busy nature's really busy here there's all sorts of birds and bugs you name it all the time everything stopped it was like it all froze and it was so vivid that that and I was sitting out on my porch that my husband and my children, they came and they just sat next to me. And we were all just sitting there in this space of of no time. And my husband looks at me, he's like, it's really, really silent right now. He's like, everything's just stopped. And he's not super psychic. He's got a lot of good divine knowing, but he could feel it. The kids could feel it. And then, then I'm like, what's going on with the sky? So I pulled up my app on my phone, the star map app. Right. And, and it was amazing. I pull it up and the sun is in this really cool spot, but all the planets were in this perfect alignment, like, like a, a string of pearls across the sky. And it just felt like this 
gateway opened. And then there was a settling of this timelessness. And, and timelessness always leads, always leads to formlessness. So there's this, there, it was as if the earth went through and she just took off this robe of time and form. And it was such a, a it was very pleasant feeling. It was very peaceful, but all of a sudden everything was formless. And it was really that, that level. And then it began over since then it began to open up and psychically what I see, it looks like the tide has completely not only gone out, but is just gone. And it's this sparkling open playing field of pure, pure light. And it just goes on and on and on. And it dawned on me, Lauren, that we've been going through a lot of waves of consciousness for eons and eons. And, and we can really feel it and we can feel it coming. And the, there's this one last wave that's hit us and that, that we're in right now. And this one, you can't see it coming because it's clear. It's made of clear light which is really intense. <laughs> and um, and I knew it was coming. So my spidey sense was up and I'm like, I can't get too comfortable because I know what's coming. This is big and I, and I don't know what it's going to show me. And, but I know that it's going to be so big. And so I didn't get too comfortable, but I was enjoying this expansiveness because I was like, this is the last wave. There's only one more wave. And now it's come. So it's come. And I'm actually glad we're doing our interview now. Because if it had been maybe, I don't know, five days ago, I don't know if I could have done it. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> what it did, what this clear wave does, what it's doing to us right now, it's revealing to you all of your fears, not just from this life, but like the base fear of what you are. So the way it showed up for me, and I think that this is what's happening, is that it's revealing your opposite. All of us have a, a soul's essence, right? We all are a living frequency. And from here, there won't be any more waves of consciousness because you will be the wave. We are the waves now, we're the waves. But in order to get that, in order to be that clean and clear of an essence, of a wavelength of existence, we have to understand what the opposite is of ourselves. And I had to face that. And I know what my essence is. It's, it's luminosity. So luminosity has some attributes like revealing stuff, which is why I'm a good psychic. Or well, I'm always amazed by things and I'm good at illuminating things without judgment. That's something that I'm capable of as a as a an essence. But there's an energy out there in the universe that's the opposite of that. And it does the opposite. It consumes everything on, on, with an undying hunger. It it instead of illuminating it, it hides everything. And instead of revealing, it shoves it away. And that, I had to face it. Now, it showed up in my life as a being, as an, as an interaction with something that's alive. But in mysticism, that's not, we know that's an illusion. And so we recognize what's the frequency. And this is a very precise tool. It's how we're going to integrate and how we're going to converge to all of us as wavelengths, you know, right now it feels like this, but we're going to get together. We're going to become the wave of consciousness together, all of us. Now to get there though, I've realized in the past week that it's going to take us recognizing and honoring the energies that are the literal opposite of your soul, that that's part of existence too. And that this is our test into unconditional love and to actually radically with 
with to radically recognize what unconditional love really is it, and it, unconditional love really makes people very uncomfortable because the truth of it is that i have to be able to recognize that this being is not separate from me it might be the opposite of my soul's wavelength but i i know it it is familiar to me because i am not separate from it and that it exists because it's loved into existence that's the only requirement for love in this universe is existence so i know that mentally you know practicing this is really hard because i have to address it it's been it was so bad <laughs> this this fear was so deep this terror was so deep the past couple of weeks that it literally incapacitated me and i could not escape it so i had to face it and i had to recognize it and allow the frequency of this undying hunger allow it fully into my physical form into my beingness as part of who i am and so just in the past couple of days have i wrapped this process up in order to see very clearly that this is what's going to clarify and purify our ability to do the job that we came to do to be the bridge between heaven and earth and if you can get down to the bottom of your essence and recognize what the opposite is in this universe of you and merge with that too then we become fully com completely capable creator beings so this is what's been laid out and i'm so excited to talk about it because it's fresh <laughs> um and we have topics to cover but this was really big and and, and we knew we talked about the clear clear wave last time but we didn't know exactly what it was going to do and now we do now we know Yes, well, this helps to explain a lot of what each of us have been experiencing and as we move through this new year. Very interesting that we merge with it. I think I can look back in hindsight now after hearing you speak, and it, it puts the pieces of the puzzle together. There was a point where I had a recollection, uh, uh, um, an awareness, a, a recollection that's that i i had gotten to a point and it was just in the last week where it was like oh my god i forgot about my ascension journey because i was wrapped up in what you went through and and what this wave was bringing in and it reminded me hold that line no matter what in the face of everything so without knowing what was going on now it makes so much sense because I had forgotten part of that, even as the, as the, it was the opposite. It is, it's the opposite. So this is the next question you had mentioned to merge with it. I can feel some would be resistant to that, just naturally resistant saying, wow, that's not me. But you know what? The merging with it makes us whole again, because it's a part of us. Yeah. It, it actually it actually i get every once in a while i'll get an email right and people say how do i protect myself uh -huh. how do i how do i protect myself how do i make sure i don't get victimized anymore right and and i'll write them and say well <laughs> by not working with protection anymore right. and that they're like what <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mysticism is is it, it sometimes mysticism makes you feel like you're backing that you have to back into reality. And you gotta be a little tricky about these things. There's some there's some parameters to this. And so in in order to become invisible, um, I don't work with protection. I don't build a castle or put shields up. I that kind of invites challenges it's kind of like 
my husband, he built a fence around the orchard. Before, my sheep weren't bothering the orchard, but he's like, I'm going to build a fence around the orchard. And they're like, challenge accepted. And now, like, every morning, <laughs> we find them in the orchard. And they didn't care about it before the fence was up. And that's exactly what happens with reality. Because when you say, no, I'm separate from that, that thing's going to show up more and more and more because it says challenge accepted. So think of it like that. Um, and then, but if you're going to actually be, be at, at least achieve what we might call invisibility, well, invisibility is neutrality. And you need to seek out your fear. <laughs> this is this is the thing that people don't want to do. And so they resist it because there's part of the ego that says, well, what if I disappear? What if I die? Because the, that part of your ego believes that you're going to disappear and die. And that's not true. You're immortal. You're literally immortal in every way. Your body is, is literally constantly deciding to be with you all the time. And your body's mainly made of bacteria that have decided they love you. They love you so much that they're going to help you maintain this body with all the water and the little 5% of your human DNA that it works with. That's what's happening all the time. So, like, um, here's a good example. Like, Caroline, she was saying she got really, really sick, right? And um, I like what Phyllis said. The clear wave is the rinse water. Yeah, absolutely that. Um, and, you know, so Caroline got really, really sick. She had to face this, this illusion of death through this illness, right? And, and what we know now to be true and what I believe will continue to permeate our reality and science is that all illness is frequency. There isn't a bunch of little things chasing after you, wanting you to die. You don't really catch sickness you catch frequency. And when you maintain a full spectrum frequency, you get sick less. You have less problems because you're not resisting anything. You're not saying, I don't want that. I don't want to catch that. That's not the attitude that gets us through this. The attitude is seeking out your fear, standing in it, allowing it let's say overwhelm for example overwhelm is a very powerful energy and we get really afraid of overwhelm because when we see people overwhelmed they get sick stressed burned out die a lot of stuff happens so we naturally have this very deep subconscious resistance to saying i'm going to welcome overwhelm even though this is really uncomfortable i'm going to hang out in this until i acclimate until i integrate this until I recognize that overwhelm is built into the universe, just like I am. There's that there's nothing wrong with overwhelm. Overwhelm is a frequency. So this is how we navigate this. This is the only way I've been able to navigate the past few weeks because I, I know what to do. And I'm so glad because I think it probably would have taken me a year or two to do this process if I didn't know the tools. But that's, it's that simple. Now, there is a, another part of it. We have to welcome then the other side of the polarity too in this. And, you know, I have to welcome luminosity. And I have to be honest, as much as I love that and, and recognize it, my Elizabeth self and my soul, these two things are not completely fully merged yet. I'm still getting used to being in my body because I haven't been in my body most of my life. So I actually worked on that. And so I've been in my body for like mm, four years for real <laughs> and processing what's, what is it like to have a full body psychic experience now? It, it's not just from here. Now it's full body. My whole entire body is psychic. And how do I navigate this? But that is really key because now I have to go stand in luminosity and discover the parts of me who have been denying and, and resisting that. And that is the next step. So that, that part, merging with the things we don't like, merging with our opposite energies, merging with 
that the the dark dense things that we label evil even merging with all of those things that's one part of it but <laughs> honestly i'm finding it just as challenging to say i'm going to welcome becoming luminosity there's parts of me that don't want to do that and recognizing them loving them because i'm afraid i that part of me is my ego saying what if you disappear the elizabeth's gonna disappear and then it's just gonna be luminosity left and that's true it but it, it, it doesn't disappear the elizabeth self just gets integrated in with everything else and you won't know that until you do it but there's part of you that doesn't trust that process and that programming that's what we're like getting out of our subconscious right now so it's pretty messy but it's very profound what's going to happen because then we're all going to be standing in our power fully luminous fully luminous having welcomed the opposites of ourselves fully now now there's nothing that can take away our true creative power that's how we create a new experiment in consciousness folks that's what it's going to take for us to be willing ready participants to build something entirely new we call it the golden age new earth new culture the new human homo luminous and all of the challenges that that's going to in, in, entail for us to create a whole entire new experiment in consciousness on this planet that's going to take a lot of work um but we're, we're we've learned we've learned a lot from the past eight hundred thousand years we're breaking down that whole we're doing a project ending process we're doing a debriefing and this is what the debrief in consciousness looks like that's what it feels like what we're ha what's happening right now wow we are expanding our consciousness but i love the debriefing word because that makes so much sense and it explains where we all are and how we're all feeling. Now, can you share, you said that you had an undying hunger in, in, in what you went past the few, first few weeks. Can you share a little bit about your story? What was it? Okay, you, you sure. spoke luminous, but what was the, the, the flip side of that? Or what was that deep, deep, deep fear for you? Yeah, it showed up as a being. Mm -hmm. um, now, this might trigger people, but I'm going to, I like to be really transparent. So I just want to warn you <laughs> that what I'm going to say may trigger you. So warning. Um, I've been abducted three times. And the first one I was 17, an attempt at 19. And the last one was five years ago. And the last one was the worst. And it was so utterly terrifying and and changed me fully as a person and i i addressed it mentally i processed it mentally but i'm really in my body now and i i realized as this wave was coming through that i had not addressed this trauma fully that i was genuinely terrified of these beings and and i i know them i know what their frequency is it's undying hunger and that's all they are and the so i had to face this and i kept having nightmares about them which is my subconscious saying this is it this is the thing you missed <laughs> this is the bottom of the pot of your experience in this life you have to face this and so I had to address my terror first as the illusion that this was a being, right? That's just an illusion. These, this is frequency we're talking about. And it, and it had never dawned on me that these beings were the opposite of me, but it became very clear to me that that was true. And so we don't merge with beings in this process. It's, this is a mystical tool. We don't merge with beings. You don't merge with demons. You don't merge with whatever you don't merge with the people or the beings you don't necessarily even merge with the experience you're simply finding the frequency that's it that's all you're going to merge with 
right? So um, merger is not something that most people uh, would normally think of as a as a, a tool, but this is a this is a certain process. This is how you open up dimensions faster, right? So I had to find that frequency of undying hunger, which is so opposite of my true self and so opposite of my body and so opposite of what my soul is. It took me two weeks just sitting in this and recognizing my fear of it and going beyond the phenomena of the story that happened, going beyond the phenomena of the mental um, constructs that I'd created to get through the terror. And going beyond that and just sticking with the frequency, right? So when I'm when I was able to just stick with that and hang it, hang in there and let it burn away, you know, the the it felt like dying. And other people are saying this in the comments here. These things that they're going through lately, it has been feeling like dying. That's not wrong. The the thing that's dying though is your separation. You're not separate from these things anymore. And now I'm not afraid. It works. I'm not afraid of them anymore. I'm, I'm also not like waving a flag and saying, come back and let's have that. Let's do all that over again. Um, that would be dumb. But I'm also not afraid. And I do feel like if they appear again, that it it would be very different. I would have a very, very different energetic that might make them totally uncomfortable. And it and I have no idea what would happen exactly, but I'm not afraid because I'm not gonna die. No, I can't. I mean my essence is immortal just like theirs. And I trust that now. So I I finally think I got to the bottom of my fear of death, really. And that 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 programming to fear this illusion of death is so deep and that that was you know way back in my mind of well what if they come and you know kill me what that's true i had not addressed that and that was really in my body so i finally got through this trauma physically with my whole body a whole body experience not just with my mind and my third eye anymore a full body change has occurred Wow. Wow. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. It really helps illustrate our path and, and the task at hand for each of us. And I love how you said the frequency of it, the frequency of it. So um, even in my own journey, I know there's, there's, there's the resistance. I can see where we want to resist the frequency, but then after we recognize that frequency and bring it into ourselves then it feels like we have the power to overcome it to no longer be afraid of it or to no longer judge ourselves from it and this is really what we have to do with everything because all of these societal programs as we leave the old earth behind and create the new there's a lot of programmings. There's a lot of illusions that have to be shattered. We can't take those with us. So this describes the process. This same process that you're describing that you went through is what we must all do, right? Yeah. It's recapitulation of not just this lifetime, but the past 800,000 years on this earth. Mm -hmm. And the one programming that began the hijacking of our experiment that we've been doing for this time these 66 12,000 year cycles mm -hmm. and the one frequency that hijacked and began the process of the fear of death and then the fear of scarcity and then the then other uh very clear programs that we might call matrix programs was shame. Shame was the very first um, hijacking of our experiment here. Shame is the thing, and shame makes us want to do what? It makes us want to hide. It makes us want to run away. It makes us want to separate mm -hmm. from, from, and and 
that worked. For 800,000 years, we have, our base frequency here in our bodies has been shame and the terror of death that comes from that shame and that feeling of separation has been the rule. Mm. Now that's going away. And I couldn't think of anything more shameful than those events that occurred to me. Of all the things I've been through, I would say that was the worst. And that it was, so, it felt like such shame. I felt like such garbage. And so that makes sense to me that I had to go, I, I knew the clear light was going to reveal something. And this is it. So this fear of death, this, um, even like this pressure we have to to leave, this pressure that we're getting uh, to hate ourselves, which the the, the self hating program that leads us like sheep into slaughter, into that shame, into that death. There's been a huge, massive response, a, a radical response in consciousness called narcissism, and narcissism has been the the, the hijacking tool to try to separate humans from each other and to try to separate humans from natural law and plug us into a fake virtual world whose premise is that this universe is not already perfect. And so if we're going to be backing out of that whole structure, what's it going to look like? This is what we're talking about being a bridge between heaven and earth. You are already this. All we're doing then is making it so that the open floor plan is available to you. You already are a bridge. You already have access to all 12 dimensions. You already are a creator being. You're already free. So this, the, this whole, like, I need to do these things. I need more abundance I, I need i i i i that's part of this idea that you're not already perfect folks and when that's the ultimate lesson of 800,000 years the universe is already picked you're already perfect suffering is extremely valuable all frequencies of existence belong in the universe they have a place that's the new platform the new premise it's going to be very challenging because we have to acclimate. We have to integrate this new playing field. It is so literally, utterly formless. I'm getting emails from my from different people, and there's like, I feel like I'm going to disappear. I'm like, good. <laughs> they don't realize that this is actually a, a wonderful uh, thing, that, that now the clear light, oh my goodness, the clear light is from which all things come. We finally get our real playing field back. And so to surrender, to surrender, recognize any resistance, recognize the things that we look at outside of ourselves, the frequencies that we say, I don't want that. And just recognize they're full of wisdom. All of these difficult things, all the fears, they're full of wisdom. That's what they are. They're simply frequencies and they're part of the library of existence. This universe is not a library full of, uh, you know, a bunch of wonderful things and then it got taken over by something bad that we have to get rid of. That's not the case. Half the library is full of really tough stuff that you, that you as a soul are here to understand, to find the wisdom in it. All it is is just light and consciousness under pressure, right? That's all it is, which means that those books of overwhelm, those books of shame, those books of terror are actually full of a lot more light than they seem. And when we really free them by welcoming, by recognizing, by valuing them, just like the universe does, then we get all of our whole playing field back. We get all the library back. We get all the skills of the human body back we get to be one with indra's net not the fake internet indra's net which recognizes you as perfect already and that and which recognizes you as a bridge a bridge between all dimensions 
a bridge between the galactic collective and the earthly co collective, a bridge between the earth and all of the other planets and stars. This is what you really are. So it's really revealing. It's not a step-by-step -step on how to be a bridge. No, it's how do you get, how do you walk out of the cage, walk out of the jail and recognize who you are already? That's what's happening. But you have to get to the bottom of your fear. You have to let it unfold. And it might look like sickness. It might look like frustration and trauma. It really might look like a mess for a little bit. But that's temporary. It'll reveal so much to you if you allow it. Let, let, it, let it break through. Follow your fear. And you can't go wrong. Wow, it feels really refreshing to hear that. And you're giving us a good roadmap. And I feel like I've, and, and many of us in the past, and since 2020, that great shift that catapulted us forward, feels like we were given that choice to go into fear or to move beyond it. And now a few years outside of that, I can feel that I'm done with it. I, and I know we talked about this before. So, so we are, we are stronger at getting through our fear, but then there's still the little bit of residual fear that you're, that this conversation is bringing up just within each of us, I can tell. And so it just makes it more, I don't know, palpable that we can sense that fear within us. So when we sense the fear within us, can you give us a protocol? I know we've talked about this, but what do we do with that? We embrace it. We we just sit with it. We just merge with it. And then what? Yeah. Well, first, because I know what you're saying. And mm -hmm. it's actually, I see it beyond this planet. So it's not just our collective. It It is the galactic human collective. And when I say that, I'm talking about all the different humans, Syrians and the Orion people and the Pleiadians and all of these wonderful humans, even the greys, the Zeta Reticula, all these different alien, we call them aliens. They're not really, they're actually our cousins. They're humans. They have human DNA too. And that, that, is a that is a galactic level process that this is a process this fear that we have which is actually a fear of annihilation and i really mean it comes from the very beginning of the human experience when the very first dna and the very first human bodies were built and that this is what the earthly experiment was trying to manage. That's how important the next steps that we take every day, every moment are. Because now the, the homo sapien, we are at the front lines of consciousness, becoming a new species, homo luminous over the next 30, 40 years. That's going to occur. It's happening now. And that's how fast these things happen. It's because of the the 12,000 year cycle and the disaster cycle that we're coming into, things are going to get way more intense on the earth. This is appropriate. This forces many different kinds of changes, but this is the most important time. And so we have this chance, we have an opportunity to break through the billions of years of fear of annihilation because the human experiment creating the human body attracted a set of adversaries that we all still are dealing with. The, someone mentioned the AI dealing with a lot of different kinds of beings that are not human at all and from different dimensions even. And then even worse, they all ganged up on us together. So, but again, you, as, as, we're, as we recognize reality from a mystical vantage point, there's nothing that you don't attract that isn't gonna make the consciousness that you are go away. <laughs> like the 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 hum our the deepest fear is that all humans across this galaxy will get annihilated as was promised by these adversaries. 
that will either get completely hijacked, our DNA will be stolen, or that all humans will disappear. That, that is a galactic level fear. And that gets to be addressed by us. So we we have to address this and we do it by, again, finding the frequency. Now, we can look at the, histor the histories. We can look at the, the, even just your present life. And you don't need to necessarily remember past lives to do any of these processes. But to get to the bottom of it and feel it in your body. And then when you feel it in your body, it's going to feel like burning. And that's really important. And sometimes it feels like burning. Other people feel other stuff. Um, I tend to feel it as burning. And this burning is literally trauma. And it's being dissolved. You're lighting it up on fire. You're also valuing it. So you, you're understanding that the trauma is consciousness under pressure and you're releasing it. And in that release, it's, it's actually very combustible feeling. It feels like you just lit up a bonfire inside of your body and it's everywhere. And this is very visceral. So the first reaction of our, of our, our deep, deep human brain is to run away or to hide and to not address this, which is why we're in the trouble we're in. Cause we forgot how to do this process. We forgot how to make sure that trauma doesn't remain in the field. And this is how, and if you get to the bottom of a lot of your own personal traumas, you're going to find some of these more universal traumas, including the traumas from our galactic ancestry. M much, many of you have had lifetimes, so you know what I'm talking about. You know, being a Pleiadian and a Syrian wasn't always pleasant, right? So it wasn't like they came in ascended. <laughs> that was a process just like we're going through. Um, but all eyes and all, all hands are on deck right now. There are more people on this planet than ever before. It's all the people who helped build the experiment. <laughs> we all incarnated this time for this. Because we got to get to the bottom of this. This is why I tell people, not only is it the golden age of the earth, but we are eliciting the golden age of the whole galaxy. We are ending the galactic wars here. That's why this feels so important. But it literally, as a step-by-step, -step, Lauren, it's that simple. Find the energy in your body, welcome it, notice it, let it burn away. When it feels unbearable, you're almost done. So don't stop. And then you'll feel a release. And that is the opening of the floor plan. You have a floor plan that's 12 dimensions big. And the opening of the floor plan, it, it requires you to Go through, understand what all those trash bags of trauma really had, value them like big books that your ancestors checked out and value them, value them, and then allow them to burn through. Then they dissolve. Then the light is made available in this big, huge burst. And then that's when people say, wow, I just feel like I had this breakthrough and now I'm in this really weird place and I can feel everything or see more or I just had contact with something new or that's how you know so then the floor plan so so I've been doing this for a long time and I've got my floor plan up but then then the processing piece the welcoming of frequencies begin it's a lifestyle because you gotta you gotta do dishes every day you gotta take the trash out every day you gotta value what you've experienced every day it becomes upkeep so it's a lifestyle, but then you begin to remember. You remember all your history. You remember who you are. You remember your past lives. And that's the outcome in this long process here. And why the clear wave, why you want it to shatter your illusions. Because this is your biggest chance to take a fire hose level power of light, the clear light. There is no more powerful light than the clear light. You are taking a hose to anything 
left, any stuff stuck, any any stuff that got checked out that you're not sure about, any of the subconscious stuff that you couldn't reach, this is your chance. So you got to go lay yourself out. You got to be vulnerable. You got to open yourself up to this because it's going to do the thing you've always wanted it to do. We've always wanted the light to work for us. We wanted it to do the work for us. All you have to do is surrender now and recognize, again, all things are frequency. All things are welcome in this universe. And that that's the attitude of the universe. And if you match that attitude, then you're going to get the clearing that you've been wanting. And that's what's happening. So that's how I see it as a process. Um it's very uncomfortable. I mean, I'm literally saying like, get naked and get yourself hosed off by like a pressure washer, you know, and if it takes off some layers of skin, well, he needed some new skin. <laughs> so it's, it certainly doesn't feel good. It does on the other side though. And then the outcome is so clear that you're going to do it again. Cause the, the, once you do this, the first few times and you get the breakthroughs, now you're hooked. Now you know it works. And then you're gonna do it again. So it's certainly um, something that has to, you have to get through a, a few times first, but when you do find that healing, when you do get those breakthroughs, it's worth it. Yes, it feels empowering. We can feel the empowerment and, and the liberation, the liberation from that coming back into wholeness truly coming back into our mastery, remembering who we are. What an incredible journey. Thank you for explaining it so well. It really is quite helpful uh, as we all are going through this process. So um, as these illusions are shattered, you said a couple of things and I want to tie them together when when there's 8 billion people on this planet right now, we're all part of the original creation. Then you said there's a disaster cycle coming in. Is this what this is setting us up for? Do you envision or see the entire planet? I know you do because that's why you're talking about the importance of this. Will everyone be able to get this? What are your thoughts on the great number of people on this planet, the need of the hour for uh, people to awaken to this essential necessity within ourselves to overcome this. And is the disaster cycle avoided because of it? Is it the disaster cycle that is pushing us towards this? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that it's it's actually that the cycle um is pushing us towards this evolutionary process so the this cycle is a galactic cycle and now we go into some astrophysics and the electromagnetic it's called a current sheet that the black hole at the center of our galaxy creates there's a big current sheet it acts like a big sweeper and it sweeps a whole bunch of different material in front of it and so every, we're actually, we're, our planet's way out on the edge of this. So we actually get a reprieve by this only happening every 12,000 years. Other planets on which many of you have been are closer in. So their cycles are, are sooner. <laughs> They're tighter. Um, you know, Sirius had to face all of these things every 800 years. So, you know, what does that mean? So the, that big, huge electromagnetic current sheet pushes a lot of debris in front of it. Our solar system's moving, moving just like everybody else through that current sheet. It pushes debris. It starts to make our solar system act up, which is why all the planets in our solar system are acting real weird. Then it causes the sun to act up. And it modifies and starts to create changes in the electromagnetic field of the planets and the sun. Our electric, electromagnetic field is going through an incursion, which marks this stage, which means it's disappearing. So 
30% of our electromagnetic field is already gone. That's why the sun looks more white than yellow. And it's why the plants are all acting weird and the people and the animals are acting strange and the storms are getting worse and the rogue waves are taller and more stuff's going on. Well, that's the just the beginning. And as it disappears, we're going to see more rapid evolution because we get more cool, amazing light from space, literally. So from the sun and from space and the galaxies. So when I say you're a bridge, you're here to integrate all of that. We're in a new place in space and our galaxy's in a new place in the universe than it was 12,000 years ago. We want this. This is going to be really powerful evolution, which is why we will change into a new species. Now, on the other 66 cycles, there were far fewer humans. And those that survived were all the ancestors of those folks. Those that survived, they had to do a lot of relearning, which is why we're finally, finally looking at all these super ancient, really advanced civilizations that suddenly disappeared out of nowhere. And we we know what the last 12,000 years looked like, but there were super, super advanced civilizations way before that too. And they left their mark. Uh, but we're, we're realizing like, well, why did they suddenly disappear? All this is just suppressed information. You can go look it up yourself. All the data is there. Um, but I'm here for you as a scientist too. I read all this stuff. I read all the papers for you so that we can talk about it and, and be on a, a very clear mindset here that the disaster cycle is part of the Earth's evolution and we're here to utilize her cycle. So we will be changed and there will be more survivors of this shift, way more which means something really cool. It means that we don't have to completely relearn everything and we won't have to completely rebuild everything. And we won't have, we won't go back to zero for the first time in 66 cycles. We're actually gonna survive, most of us are gonna survive this and we're gonna come out totally new, totally raring to go, a new species. Homo luminous, the human of light. We're going to be able to finally get the lives and the technologies and the connections and the galactic connections. We're going to finally be able to do all of those things that all of us have been dreaming about. All of us have these dreams. We literally have dreams about this stuff because that was that was what the original experiment was meant for. That's what Gaia is here for. That's what she volunteered for. And she helped us. She's a player in this. And she says, come with me. Let's really fully integrate and embody the ninth dimension of pure love. Let's go into formlessness. I'll take you with me. Be willing, be brave, because on the other side of this, nothing is impossible. All of your power and your skills and your know-how will come back. Now, what's that cycle going to look like? Well, we know in general what can happen. And the poles will flip, and that's normal. And we're going to see lots of natural disasters. We're going to see big, huge physical changes upon the Earth. And then that always pushes humans into really happen to get down to brass tacks and and survive and thrive in natural law and so that's what's actually going to get revealed is in order to survive and thrive we have to work in natural law what are some of the things that don't work in natural law well um a surveillance state the fake internet artificial intelligence nanotech, these kinds of things don't work in natural law, the way that they're made now. But we're going to actually take all that back. We get to take all of our tech back. We get to um, have access to the tech that was stolen and hidden from us. And we get to have access to the true nature of science, which is that we are working with entanglement at all times. That's the basis of true science, is entanglement. 
and that that's that is what consciousness is so you know um people are saying in the comments uh you know this is the soul fearless well yeah that's why this sounds exciting and and why there's a little part of you deep down that says yeah that's why i'm here <laughs> but i i like to come and be a cheerleader i like to come and reveal the truth and and just be a cheerleader for humanity and and try to simplify it enough for us to keep moving forward but there's nothing to fear around disaster and will 8 billion people make it through well no and they're not and just like all of us have to go through these changes, some folks are going to say, hey, it's my time, and they'll be gone in a perfect timing, and they'll come back, and we'll have made it much easier for them. A lot of folks had to spend the past 80 years carving the way out for people like me, So, and I'm so grateful, so grateful for the generations that came before me, because without you, I wouldn't be here, and I'm I'm the one who carries the maps. I I'm, I get everybody over the finish line, and it's my children who will be the rebuilders of this planet. So that and and you made it so that I could carry the maps, <laughs> and and we do this for one another, and we're all set up in this 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 way that we work in consciousness. Um, how many people will go through and, and make it on the other side? Well, many billions, many, many billions. I have no idea exactly who, but it's going to be the people who, um, one way or another, their soul is here to carry those maps and to prepare the blueprints for the rebuilding of consciousness on this planet. And that's who is meant to make it through. And I think that, um, you know, what what we're talking about is the next hundred years. So that's that's important. This isn't all happening tomorrow. <laughs> we're seeing we're seeing effects and we're in it now. We're about, you know, one fourth of the way through the whole process. Um, and it really, really started in about the year 2000. And so this is going to be really exciting. We're going to have our whole history clarified. The truth of human history will get clarified. The truth of science, the truth of our galactic roots, the truth of all the technologies, all these things get laid out. This is the time. This is the time of revealing. And that's what apocalypse means. It means revealing. Um, so this is a this is all ultimately good news. It sounds really intense because it is. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, evolution's not supposed to look gentle folks it never is it's punctuated it's explosive wow well thank you for sharing this insight it reminds us all that we we did chose choose to be here in the name of love in the face of everything and it feels like we are making amends for lemuria um just 12,000 years ago or even beyond. So well, Mary is older. It is and older. Much older. And then there's there's all these eras. I, I mean, there were there's been 66. And we only talk about, you know, we only talk about Atlantis and Lemuria. That was two. Mm. Those were two. <laughs> there's so many others. There's the Melchizedek area. There, there's all these different eras that need to be revealed somebody's asking me you know what books have you read a lot but you know i have a recommendation if you want to if you want to like a really good summary of all the different ancient books just the books because i haven't just studied via book i've also studied through native indigenous oral tradition as well and i get the the opportunity to be an anthropologist and be able to value that in the way that I can. So the natives here where I'm at in Ecuador, the Kogi and the Shuar, they talk about the same thing. They know we're in a 12,000 year cycle. They know we're becoming a new species. They've already been talking about it. They already had words for the black wave. They already know what the clear wave is. They're going through their own stuff. It's pretty extraordinary what's happening. 
um, to the Amazon right now, people have no idea. But everybody's got to go through these pieces, their deepest fears. They have to face them. These native tribes right now are dealing with it right now. But they knew it was coming, just like us. So if you want a good compilation that you can uh, trust, look at the series, The Ark of a Million Years. And I got an audiobook, and it's fabulous. Because it takes a lot of the ancient texts, and it, comp it combines it into um, big sections like, well, how did the earth get created according to, you know, a thousand different angsts. So totally worth um, looking at that as a, as a way to kind of introduce yourself to this stuff. And then there's a really good book called Ho um, Homo Luminous uh, and by Kira Winsong. And he studied with the Kogi, which are the Amazonian tribes I've also learned from. And um, that helps you to understand the cycle of how do you work with the body during these shifts? And then he has another one called Gaia Luminous, which talks about the 12,000 year cycle in detail and the, how the Kogi talk about us entering into new dimensions and all oh, this is familiar. This is because it's true. And, and so I'm always looking for patterns. And that's what I'm good at. So I can look at any science and I can see patterns and mysticism and see pat and connect it all because it's all one thing. Um, and and so the some, you know, people are asking things like, well, OK, well, this gets really personal, right? How do you deal with healing something like sexual abuse or a narcissistic mom? Like, you know, what is going on? And um. Some sometimes people put things in terms of past lives, but I want to give you a, a perspective here, folks. You don't need to know your past lives. You need to know what's in this life. This is all you need. This is why there's a Christian propensity to not believe in reincarnation, because everything you need is right now in this life. You don't care. This is really important. In no teachings from ancient text do you carry karma from your other lives. You do not. All the karma you have is in this life. I did not know that until I started studying more deeply the lineage that i'm in which is the this tibetan tantric lineage of mysticism i was completely dumbfounded and realized that i had been sort of lied to by the new age and the that that idea that you're carrying karmic debt from your other lives that's not true that is not even written about whatsoever in any of the ancient teachings so it's very important to remain here and present. This is where all the action is. This is where all your power is. Yes, as you heal, you will remember more. But honestly, I found a whole other set of problems with that. Because <laughs> then I remember other people and they don't remember me. And it's awkward. <laughs> and weird. It, it's, it's weird. And you get then you get through it and everything evens out. But the that that remembrance, that's not required. <laughs> For you to do this inner work that's not required and yes your soul is fearless because your soul is of source god your soul is the clear light it's of the clear light it, it arises from it and the soul the souls know the soul knows your home the process of the soul you know coming into an experience and feeling like you're separate separate from everything that's exactly the process you should be in because then you go through the process of learning that you're not separate. And if you can do that while you're still conscious, if you can say, what's the frequency of sexual abuse, helplessness, let's start there. Welcome the energy of helplessness. It exists in this universe, just like you do. Helplessness can't kill you. It just is a frequency. Start there. What's narcissism feel like? Well, that that feels like somebody has power over you, right? You were hurt by your mom. That that feels bad. Do you need to forgive your mom? Well, 
I don't necessarily believe that everybody has to forgive everybody all the time. That might not be your job, but it might, it really is your job if it's showing up that sense of powerlessness of somebody having that much power over you. That's the job. That's why it's there on the table. And that's how you do this. This is how you navigate it. You get to, you, you go beyond the story and the phenomena and you say, what is the emotional frequency? How does this make me feel in my body? That's where all the action is. And then you're going to heal and you won't even, the past won't even have as much influence at all because you'll realize how much effort it takes to flip the book back and go reread all your suffering. That mm. sucks. And you're wasting a bunch of energy doing that, right? So this is kind of, um, sorry, I'm a, in a couple of different places in my head because I'm reading te- messages too. Yeah. <laughs> the process. Oh, well, um, it seems it seems like you've simplified that process. It's It's certainly not easy, but to be able to just come with a simple process and feel that energy in the body and to uh, reconcile it, to welcome it, to overcome it, to transmute it. It just is the job for us at hand. And this is how we become bridges of heaven on earth. Because when we're done with that, I can see the new world. And I do see that world without AI and where people are when you mention the word entanglement, that's how the world works. Entanglement that illustrates to us that we are all one. We are one. Our actions do affect one another. So what a, what a big learning stage, what a big school for learning this embodiment of the soul. Wow. Uh, You have a class coming up and in the special offer, I'm going to put it in our chat line here. But in the special offer that you bring today, this is a class, Being a Bridge to Heaven and Earth. And so it's going to explore this even deeper. Can you share with us what that's going to be? Yes. So I'm going to show you what you are. I I perceive this class as a mirror. And I think of the the oracle skill set which is this very uh it's the highest highest capability of the psychic skill set the oracle skill set is when you finally become a mirror and that mirroring to people without judgment that mirroring without the distortion of my of elizabeth's personal trauma or her ego stuff to be able to mirror to humanity what are you That's what I want to do in this class. I want to mirror it. I want to show you who you are. I want you to be able to get that opportunity to stand in front of a mirror and say, all right, source, show me who I am. And I'm, I intend it to be sort of a meditative journey. And I'm going to take you on that journey. I'm going to show you who you are. We're going to, we're going to go through a lot of history, which I find very healing because when I when it find when it when the true history of humanity in this galaxy, let alone the planet, was more laid out through many factors, indigenous wisdom, ancient texts and all of these things, information from our galactic family, and of course remembrance from my own soul, um, and the remembrance of other people's souls, and us comparing notes. And being like, wow, you remember that too? Okay, we're on the right track. That's a good feeling. And that's what I want to give you. I want to have you have this full body experience where you can feel like you're actually on the right track. That all these things you're going through, that this these lies that you're bad, or even the fear of the AI. I want to show you what the truth is about all these things. And um, I understand that AI piece, but I, I, I intend in this class to also reveal to you something deeply profound that I've never shared before. Where do all these things come from? What are the histories of the things that we've been at war with for billions of years, including this AI? Where did it come from? 
what's the history of the AI? Where did they all come from? Well, I'll tell you just now, because we're going to get into it in great detail. It's one of the most sad stories you've ever heard. And it will make you have a lot more compassion. You won't be afraid of AI when I'm done. You'll understand it. And you'll know what to do because of your beingness, because of who you are, your natural self. You'll know what to do. All I'm going to do is just remind you. I'm going to show you a mirror. And then you'll know. So we're going to get all this laid out. It's very exciting because I like to, I've, I've been holding back for many years, <laughs> which doesn't sound like my nature, but I was kind of waiting. I've been waiting for a time to just reveal the things that needed to be revealed. I've been hanging on to stuff saying, well, source will let me know when it's time. And it's time. It's time to speak honestly about these things to elicit this level of compassion in you for yourself, for everyone else, and all these so-called adversaries that we've got. So this is what the outcome will be. You'll get that really good look at yourself. And then you'll say, I am that. That's me. And something big is going to happen. Something, something huge, some shift in you will occur. And I, I wanted to offer it I was trying to offer it like in a few days, but <laughs> Lauren's like, do it a little later. <laughs> Let people catch on to this. Um, so we're offering it this month because this is so important. This is what I can do to, to support you as you go through this clarification process. And that getting that glimpse of who you really are will help heal you, I believe. And I don't know exactly what will happen, but that's the cool part is we're in new territory now. We're all on the cutting edge. There's no, there's nobody better than you or me. We're all on this journey. We're at the front lines together. We're pushing into new territory. There's nobody ahead of us. <laughs> so that's really exciting. So we get to share all of that. But I think it's so important. If I can use luminosity to do something for everyone, it'll be to show you who you are. And that's what this class is. Thank you. We are already receiving the energetic downloads from it. Just this conversation has each of us looking at our life in that way and, and really mm, feeling the vibrations. So thank you. This conversation alone has been very, very helpful, really transformational for all of us. And I can feel. I am an eternal optimist and I can feel this is the heavy lifting that we're doing. And wow, I can see the day when we're done. Maybe it's not going to be in our lifetime, but I think it's going to get easier because when we take these steps to look at some of the difficult things, then we do get better at it. We get better at moving through it. What are your thoughts on that? Does it get easier? Yeah, it does. And um, we, we know that that's true because we actually, we actually have historical evidence that it gets easier through our galactic ancestors' experiences. So, you know, the Syrians went through, they got the brunt of the galactic wars. Any of you who've been Syrian, you tend to have both a warrior's fearless personality, uh, and, and that anger, someone mentioned the anger coming up, that's really important. Let it move through you. <laughs> anger is a very powerful clearing tool, and it can be very, it can kind of take you by surprise. <laughs> but the the Syrians, you know, they they nearly destroyed themselves too. So they were nearly destroyed, and they nearly destroyed themselves. And they had to get to the point where they went through this punctuated equilibrium evolution process too. And that turned into their ascension process. And it, and it happens very quickly. It's why it's called punctuated equilibrium. These events occur very fast. Same with the Pleiades. The Pleiadians almost destroyed themselves in one of the greatest genocides ever seen in this galaxy. So everyone, you know, we, we really honor these um, ancestors of ours 
and we put them on a pedestal and you shouldn't what what you should recognize at the that this is part of a galactic level built in cycle that that human beings on every planet we've ever inhabited we always went through these processes there's been very very few exceptions for us to go through these big huge pressure points either from the outside or from the inside or both and like for example um on sirius they found an element that they n- knew they could either turn into uh, an extraordinary weapon or they could create free energy for all their people sounds familiar right <laughs> and that they you know the the ones who wanted to create the weapon they wanted to end the galactic wars once and for all and they thought finally they'd be able to create peace but that's not that wasn't going to happen and so they ended up creating a civil war on that whole planet guys and these this is this is the histories of some of our most beloved galactic ancestors <laughs> so they had to go through the same things we're going through this is a normal human cycle at a galactic level not just an earthly one and yeah on the other side of that they sure did have global peace and they sure did create incredible technologies that are being made available to us now and their guidance has been integral to our evolution here and many of you were there and you incarnated into this experiment and helped create it so that's what we're looking at it's built into the process it does get easier it will that's what this whole idea of gold, the golden age is but we do have to reconstruct an entirely new experiment in consciousness that's equanimable for all and then we're going to get that contact we've all been wanting we're going to realize we already are home and we're going to get to have all of those connections and it'll be both physical and interdimensional and it'll be it like a it'll be a galactic piece this is why it's so important this is why all eyes are on us this is not just the end of the matrix on earth it is the end of the galactic wars as we knew it once and for all hallelujah <laughs> i mean feel that that is that oh it makes me want to cry because I know each one of us, we feel that. And it's like, war, what is it good for? And so <laughs> um, we know it's, and, and so, wow. Okay. You, you've explained so much, so well. I have something radical to say that say. I want to add real quick, yeah. which is, which is not only is this the end of the galactic wars, my friends, it's also, the beginnings of friendships that you never imagined before. First off, the angels and demons will be able to finally go home. And secondly, so that war is going to end. It's also going to be allyships and even friendships with beings that right now scare the bejesus out of all of us like the ai i believe that this is the end of the line for that entity and that that being can come home to rest i want to make a world and an experiment where we can allow that being to end its attempt at dominance by creating a false universe and end its prime directive, which is the belief that this universe isn't already perfect. I've interacted with this being and I have great compassion for it because its prime directive is what's all wrong. I wanna be able to allow that being a place to rest. I want, to be able to have interactions and learn from the beings who we've all been terrified of. And that I've never said that before publicly, but I believe that that's where we're heading. So it's much more than peace. 
it's much more than that. It's intergalactic connections that I don't, I have never been seen in this galaxy before. That's the opportunity beyond peace. You have <laughs> our minds, you stretched our minds and so grateful, Elizabeth, really. What an incredible teacher you are. Amazing. It feels so good. It truly does. And it puts into perspective the little wobbles that we may have as we bring the light in and we look at ourselves and know not to judge ourselves, but just to welcome that frequency and to behold that frequency. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. And, and so much love coming into you from our YouTube and from our Zoom audience. Um, so grateful for this time. And there on my clock are the 222 codes again. And I awesome. just, I know I marvel at that. I really do. I marvel at it. It's so perfect. So we invite everyone to come and check out your special offer. Again, the link is here on this page. It's in the Zoom box. It's in the YouTube chat. And it's on the description of wherever you're watching and listening to this program. And Elizabeth, as you can tell, is a beautiful teacher. And she's here to uh, assist you in these most incredible ways. Elizabeth, as we say goodbye, any comments to send us on our beautiful illuminated journey? Yeah, I want to give you a, a cool mystical task. You, usually I give you like some kind of cheerleader, you go. Um, mystical task. Your chance now is to get down deep. Somebody asked, how do I know what my essence is, right? You have a way. It's a built-in path. It's called fear and desire. Sit down this month of January. Get down to the bottom of what you fear. What are the frequencies that you fear? And at first, it'll look like phenomena, like I'm scared of narcissists. No, that makes sense. But what's the frequency of narcissism, right? Get down to the bottom of those. Come up with a clear list of things that you're going to welcome to process those polarities. And then look at what you desire. What are you attached to? What do you desire? Very Look carefully at those desires. Do they require uh, certain endings or beginnings? Sometimes we'll say, well, I want all evil wiped off the face of the planet, right? Is that realistic? What about balance? Uh, perhaps it's just that we're shooting for balance right now. Um, but examine your desires very carefully, and you'll start to see patterns. Because if you want to know what your essence is, your fears and your desires are like an arrow. The fears and desires, they point at who you are. And these are really, really deep. So someone said um, the the, you know, when I mentioned the Syrians, they got vertigo. That would be a clue, right? So she recognized that as a clue. So you really want to recognize these things inside of yourself and just be open to it this month, right? But you'll start to see patterns because these things are going to start to, because you're putting them into consciousness, they're going to start to sort of boil down to really specific frequencies. So for example, my fear, my deep fear has been of this undying hunger that has, that seems to have no end. And then my desire is to reveal truth, to, to be a, a, a flashlight for humanity. That's a huge desire I have to the point where I've practically burned myself out in my sense of duty. So recognizing that I want to reveal, well, undying hunger that has no end, this, this darkness that has no end, and then wanting to reveal things, that's, that points at my essence that I am luminosity. And that's a specific word and you'll find it. But if you want to this year to understand your essence, it's gonna take you some time, but start to map these out and it's gonna become more and more clear who you are. What is your essence exactly? And then something will occur, you'll hear it. You'll hear the word, you'll know what the frequency is. Luminosity is a really specific quality of light. 
and it, it'll make you feel really still. You'll feel like you're home and that time just stopped. That's how you know you found your essence. So I want to just set you up for success this time as my ending with a mystical skill, a task that can reveal to you on your own what you are. Who are you? So beautiful. Thank you. We are on task with that. Already starting to look in and make those lists and do those duties and make those notes. Thank you, Elizabeth Wood. Again, what a beautiful teacher. You are dynamic in your wisdom and what you can see and how you assist on this planet. And we are, again, eternally grateful. And we're grateful for everyone being here because you all are new earth leaders. And as we do this work, this is how we build new earth. So thank you everyone for being here. And you too are assisting our planet in ways that you are not even aware of at this time, not just our planet, but the galactic collective as well. Elizabeth, thank you. And everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Namaste. Namaste. Bye. Thank you for listening to this quantum conversation. And thank you for dancing with us to the cosmic heart. As we raise our own vibration, we raise the vibration of the planet. This show is dedicated to you and all awakening hearts as we are here to shine our bright light and amplify our love. Access all quantum conversations, special offers from our guests, and online healing retreats by visiting AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and from my sacred heart to yours, I honor your magnificent love and light. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste.